All right. Uh, greetings, Brutal Planet. We got uh, myself, Dustin, and Eric here for yet another episode of the Brutal Planet podcast. I don't know if we call this like Brutal Planet Chat or Planet Chat or you know Brutal Chat, whatever. Brutal Planet podcast. Yeah, we'll, we'll call it something like that. It's it's a it's a conversation about metal. Let's put it, it that way. It is. What what do you think we should start with? Like, what's what's the what's a good subject matter to kick the show off with? Something controversial or something? Yeah, kind of let's just start with. Let's just start it right out the gate. Controversial. Let's talk about Pantera being thrown off shows in Germany for being racist. Mm-hmm. Have you seen all this? I saw a little bit of it, but go ahead and explain. So, do you know the whole history, like why they're saying Phil is a racist and everything, and like? Have, did you see the whole? I do. I did. Uh, but you, I think maybe our listeners haven't, or so you should explain it to them. So here's my take based on all the information that I've seen, right? So basically, there was, it was like Dime Bash. There was this show, and it was like Dave Grawl and a bunch of famous people were there, and Phil was singing and they were doing Pantera covers. And so Phil was in the front of the stage. And according to him, based on his, you know, his response and apology and whatever after the event, there was these people in the front row, like kind of like um, egging him on, like, like heckling him basically yeah. saying like, Hey, white power, you know, like kind of like trying to like get like, you know, mess with them. Like, Oh, what's up Nazi, you know, like, you know, some hipster kids I'm sure is, is this is this on sunset Boulevard. Like I'm sure there's some like, like, you know, indie hippies like, Oh, it's that yeah. racist bad better. Let's go yeah. make fun of him. So, Phil was drinking white wine and he's like, he, at the end of the night, he's like, he did like the high and goes white power, you know? Ah, uh, okay. If you see the footage out of context, you're like, what the fuck, bro? Like yeah. I, when I saw it, I was like, whoa, that's not cool. So anyway, <laughs> all these dudes came out and like, like the dude from machine head was the worst. He like came out and like virtue signaled like, Phil, you're so terrible. And like, Oh my God, I'm such a virtuous person and I've never done anything wrong. And so then Phil did like an apology on like, I think it was Eddie trunk who interviewed him. And he just said, he's like, look, like I'm not a racist. Okay. Like yeah. I, that was a joke. And like, it was a poor joke. It was in bad taste. I was drunk and I'm sorry. You know, like I'm I'm not a Nazi. Like I was just responding to some heckler dudes in the front row and I was being stupid. And I think they got the response they wanted out of me and ran to social media, like, oh look, he's a racist, you know. And so now <laughs> Germany like won't let the like Pantera tribute band, which is what I'm calling them because it's not actually Pantera yeah. without Vinny and Dime, but it's still cool to hear the songs. Yeah. Um I mean, let's be song. honest though, let's be honest, they they got some pretty badass. Recordings. I mean, for real, like <laughs> if like, when, okay. As soon as I heard the announcement, I was like, okay, who would dime and Vinny want to take their place at a show like this? That's exactly who it would be. Exactly. Zach wild and Charlie, like Charlie's probably an influence to Vinny because he was anthrax was around way before Pantera. Yeah. And Zach wild is of course an influence to dime. Yeah. So it's beautiful. Plus, plus not to meant that Zach was really good friends with both of those guys. Right. Zach. Uh, so apparently Zach lives out in like uh, Santa Clarita or something. Someone, I was talking to someone like at a bar or something. They're like, he's such a good dude, man. Like every, every person I've ever heard talk about, maybe it was you actually. You, yeah. You said me. some stuff too, but no, there's, there, it, I think that's why this struck me because after you met black label society and, and got, did those photos and stuff, I ran into some, I was, I think I was actually telling them about that. And and they're like, Oh yeah, I, I know him. He actually was the bartender at my bar over here. Okay. So he's like, Oh yeah. He comes into this bar in Santa Clarita all the time or something. Like he's a, he's a really good dude. Like he's like yeah. oh, just a genuinely good dude. So yeah. So they're not, they can't, they play, can't play Germany is what, Right. So and I, when I saw that story too, I'm like, okay, Germany obviously has to like be like extreme about this because of their history. Yeah. So whatever. Like, I mean, it sucks. Yeah, but I get it's it. also I like get it. I totally get it. You got to. Yeah. I just I it's it's a it's a, it's amazing to me how quickly like it's just the culture of things today. Like people yeah. just hear something and and you can call like anything anything and if enough people repeat it it's like oh that guy's this and it's like yeah of course i, I heard it on social media or i heard it on 
whatever, you know? Yeah. Yeah. No one, no, one, but in Phil's apology, he talked about how he was raised in the fucking French quarter in New Orleans. Yeah. And his mother like dated a black man. And, you know, so he's like, I, the idea that I'm like some racist or something, he's like, I grew up in, in the, in the soup buddy like new orleans is one of the most diverse like places you've ever been and he's like i I have no problems with people based on their ethnic backgrounds yeah he talked about donating money to some boxing uh, oh okay boxing gym in detroit or something in the inner city too oh interesting nice yeah so i mean he's 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 owned up to it he's apologized you know he's I, mean, I don't even I guess, think he needed to apologize, really. Yeah. But it, it's, maybe he did. It's kind of like it's an artful thing to say, and it, enough people were offended by it that it's like, okay, look, dude, like I, that's not really what I meant. I was responding to these hecklers who obviously had an agenda to take that clip and post it on Twitter or whatever. Yeah, to get followers. He didn't even say that last part about social media. I said that, but you know, okay, that's kind of how I summed it up based yeah. on all the information I had. Well, I just wanted to bring up a. Uh... Something that I'm just got it. I just got the review or I got the album to review and I'm going to be working on it. Um, it's going to be out here. The album is going to be out uh, next month. It's uh, March 10th. It's it's uh, George Lynch. who We both know George Lynch from uh, Doc and fame. And, and I was a big fan of Lynch Mob, especially yeah, Wicked Lynch Sensation. Mob, yeah. Yeah. So he's got a, a project um, called The Banishment. And the banishment has been around since 2011, surprisingly. And it's this, it's not anything you would ever think of when you hear George Lynch. Um, when we all think of his wicked guitar playing and some of his, you know, some of his solos and stuff, this is total industrial music. And it's, I mean, like I said, it's nothing you would ever think about from him, but it's, it's cool to me because, you know, I, as as an artist, I can only imagine how hard it is to get pigeonholed in, into a certain genre or a certain style and only have to be able to play that. And if you don't play that, then everybody's pissed. You know, It ruins a lot of people, man. It ruins a lot of artists. Yeah, it's like, where's Mr. Scary, man? Where We want yeah. Mr. Scary and, and you know... and. God bless George Lynch because he comes out with this this badass um, industrial album, and it's got it's got a uh, Richard Patrick from uh, Filter from Filter, and he sings a song on it. And then you'll love this even more. It's got um, uh, what's Tommy Victor from Prong? Oh, two- that's my guy right there. He sings two songs on it. Such an underrated dude. So yeah. like influence underrated, like, but. Uh, what you were saying about um who'd you say before Tommy uh that's Richard on there. Patrick. Richard Patrick. I always trip on <laughs> I always trip that his brother was the T one thousand. Oh yeah. 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 So this so this is I mean it's like I said, it's it's not anything you would ever expect. There are when you hear it, you'll say, Oh yeah, now I hear a little George Lynch in there. Now I hear a little George Lynch in there, but I don't think he ever intended it to be anything like any of his other projects. And it's the album's called machine and machine and bone. And it's like I said, March 10th is one is coming out. I'm working on the review right now, but I can't wait for other people to hear. I mean, so they've released some of the stuff already. It's been out. He's had it out pushing it for a while, but it finally got picked up on frontier. So it's going to be out you know, March 10th, and I can't wait for people to hear this thing, man, because it is bad. Is, there's parts of it that sound like ministry, there's parts of it that sound like Nine Inch Nails, there's parts of it that sound a little bit bl- a Black Label Society, and then there's even some parts to me that sound a little Beastie Boys sabotage sound to it, you know? Is he going to tour behind it? I don't know. I I can't. I, it, I guess it probably depends on um, the reception to it, you know? That's cool. So. That's funny because I'm reviewing that Steel Panther right now, and th- like it's hilarious. But they have this one song, and it always sticks. It's like I, I, you know, everyone will hear it when it comes out in a couple of weeks. But it, the chorus goes, "Your vagina, your vagina." <laughs> it's so good. Well, I, they just released a song that was it, "Friends with Benefits." Oh, that one's so good too. 
friends with uh, i mean i i feel like every album has gotten consecutively better from yeah. them as crazy yeah. as that is there's a song on this one too the vert it's like one of the last songs it's called um i ain't dead yet and it's so good <laughs> it's like it's nice. as as a for a guy like me who's in his 40s it's like the it's relatable. He's yeah. like he's like he's like listing all these problems he has. Like he can't shoot jizz anymore as far <laughs> and stuff. He's like it just dribbles. It just dribbles out now. He's he's like, but I ain't dead yet. So what I think what you're trying to say is it's classic Steel Panther. Oh, it's amazing. It's so it's every like and every song is good too. It, it, but and then there's some amazing like on Friends with Benefits. There's some amazing guitar playing. Uh, like some of the, he does these really cool little like um, uh, Satchel does these really cool little blends, like lead blends that are you know, and it's just yeah, it's so cool. To, like their story is so cool because they were a cover band that's now like just loves loved playing the music. And yeah. if you've ever been to one of their shows, you can just it's just a good time. They just they're just having fun. Yeah, and then it's like all of a sudden they started writing you know, like they became an actual like legit band <laughs> they turned being a tribute band into like being an original band and yeah, and it's in, yeah in the best way possible it's in like it's legit it's funny it's fun it's like it's just and it's they, they're so talented they're such great players like the, the as musicians you know without so, without like saying that they are this it, it kind of has a without them actually doing the uh actual covers of things it kind of reminds me of a, a dirty weird al yankovic almost pretty much i mean it's <laughs> it it is but it isn't you know yeah, because know. it's it, because it's also a tribute to metal it's like yeah. they're fans of that music like they're oh, legitimately yeah. fans of that like they're kind of making fun of it they're taking the piss as the british would say but they, but they legitimately love those bands oh yeah you know like they, they're not doing it because they hate Motley Crue and they want to like get at them, you know, they're doing yeah. it. Cause like they fucking love Motley Crue and they love playing their songs and yeah, they love that era of, of metal. Yeah. I, Which I, I love it a lot more in retrospect, but <laughs> just going off topic a little bit. Um, when you mentioned Motley Crue, it struck into my head that uh, John five just started playing with Motley Crue and there was some video of him, with their his the his first tour or his first show with them and he looked pretty damn good that's dope you know what's funny is that doesn't surprise me because i follow tommy lee on instagram yeah and him and john five have been interacting on instagram for for years now like for a long time like yeah. i always see them like liking each other's posts and stuff yeah. and so that's cool uh, i mean the other thing that's cool is you know i have a son who's in high school and just like this type of music, the type of music you and I love is like, has such a resurgence among younger kids, man. I I'm still tripping about when we went to that black label show in Salt Lake with obituary and prong, how uh -huh. many like young kids ran on the floor for obituary. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. It's amazing. Crazy. It's crazy. Yeah. I love it though. So let's t t tell me a little bit about uh, Dave Mustaine. Oh, so I just saw this story and I thought it was funny because, you know, it's Dave Mustaine's talking trash about Metallica in the press again. And I'm like, what is he on now? And then I was just reading into it and it's like, he's like, he's like, why won't they let Megadeth play with, with them? Are they, he's like, what are they? He goes, his words are, what are they afraid of? <laughs> um, I don't know, not making as much money as they would with a band that can draw people. Like, yeah. Yeah, I, and I love Megadeth. Don't get me wrong, but I, I, anecdotally, when I went to that Slipknot show last summer with Cypress Hill in Vegas, this guy behind me who had his kid with him, which I thought was so dope for Slipknot, um, had a Megadeth T-shirt on, and so we started chatting, and he goes, "Yeah, I just saw them with Lamb of God," and he's like, "Having Lamb of God open." not a good decision. <laughs> <laughs> he's just like, yeah, kind of like. You can tell they're a little bit older at this point. It's like and the Lamb of God comes out and blasts people. It's kind of like when Skid Row had Pantera, vulgar display of power, yeah, you know, like Pantera opening for him. It's just yeah. like that's no contest. Like no, I mean maybe what Metallica is worried about is having to pay for a Greyhound <laughs> ticket to send 
Dave, <laughs> Dave Bolton. <laughs> having to listen to him bitch about everything. <laughs> Remember that time you guys sent me on the Greyhound? Yeah. I love the like, and he was on Joe Rogan a couple, like maybe last year or sometime. And it was interesting to listen to. Like, I, I have respect for the man. But then also he's like telling this story about how he beat James up because he hit his dog or some, or some weird thing. I'm just like, bro, like you still sound like a frat boy from high school. And it's like, just let that stuff die. Why, why do you have to tell that story? Like you're, yeah. I'm sure James could kick your ass now. And even if he didn't, man, like whatever, you know, I don't, I wasn't there. So I'm sure the story's fabricated yeah. to some degree from his perspective. But anyway, it's just funny. It's like, come on, man, like live and let live. You guys did your thing. You aired your dirty laundry, you know, get on with your life and stop obsessing over Metallica, bro. Yeah. So I, I wanted to go back and I think we both need to go back. We, we you have a, something to talk about, but I want to talk about, to, you know, I like to talk about albums that are serving or have their anniversary or their birthday. Um, right. You know, and right now, one of the biggest albums that was born or released on February 13th back in 1970 is uh black Sabbath self-titled album, uh, black Sabbath. And, you know, there's always that controversy of, you know, who began heavy metal and who was the, the original heavy metal. And we, you know, and I think we both can agree that black Sabbath is it. I mean, I mean that's a game changer. What yeah. was me- what metal was before Black Sabbath? Like who can who can throw shit? I, I throw mean, me an example. There's like, there's always you know there's it, always Maiden, the, none of Maiden's records came out before Sabbath. No, no, no. It, but there was always you know the Led Zeppelin was that Led Zeppelin that and and then there was you know the, the you know the term heavy metal. Where did that come from? And then it's mentioned in the the Steppenwolf song heavy metal thunder and you know but it's to me okay it, Steppenwolf maybe were they there do they predate Sabbath yeah they did but but still Steppenwolf just because they mention heavy metal doesn't mean that they are heavy metal so here's here's my perspective on that what take it for what it's worth which is not a lot but um I think what I what the reason Sabbath gets tagged with being the first metal band is because of their aesthetic and how they said, Hey, we were kind of like the anti hippies. Yeah. We were like, because Zeppelin was kind of in the hippie category, you know, and, and Sabbath was like, we were like, no, fuck the happy hippie shit. Like we're doing the dark. We're going dark. We're going. Yeah. And that like, is their aesthetic. And that like the album you're speaking of right now kind of just like proves positive. Yeah. I mean the, 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 the self-titled song black Sabbath. I mean, that song itself pretty much says it all as far as to me, the birth of heavy metal. Right. And, Ste- Steppenwolf might've been like a precursor to that. Right. It's kind of yeah. like, they, but Sabbath really took it like to the limit. Like this is the aesthetic is like, fuck the hippies yeah. dark as fuck. Yeah. So anyway, that album celebrates it's uh, celebrated. It's 53rd anniversary or birthday i should say um on the 13th and for the record i don't personally believe fuck the hippies uh I, I, there's a lot of hippie shit that i i'm yeah. guilty of yeah, yeah. enjoying i'm just saying that was the reason you give black sabbath the 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 credit for the inventing metal because exactly. that, it was that exactly. Aesthetic, right? exactly have you so seen now- the south park have you seen the south not to not to take too far of the side but have you seen the south park where um to just like there's like a jam band concert breaks out and to like no. split it up cartman plays slayer <laughs> so no, good. I haven't. so good they're like it's so funny because they're like oh let's have a jam band concert bro nice. <laughs> he's like ah oh, fuck it <laughs> and he rolls in and starts jamming slayer they're like oh dude what is that <laughs> Nice. So you've got a new, um, what do you call a a program that on Brutal Planet? Oh yeah, I I think uh, in on the subject of classic albums. Yeah, exactly. um, I did that. I did a video about which is going to be a part of a series called Bands of Your, 
And this one was about the Steve Vai um, album. So it's funny because I always remembered it as the band was Sex of Religion. Yeah. But it's actually the band is Vi. And he says that on the Headbangers Ball. So after I actually finished the video and I, I put that Headbangers Ball clip in, I went back and changed all the tags to Vi, oh, Sex okay. of Religion. So I, I know it's not tech, Sex and Religion in the band. So anyway, the story is about... It's, it, it was marketed as a band and, and Vi says that on the headbangers ball interview. And he says that in the, in the interviews he did promoting it, he's like, I, yeah. I wanted to build a band after. And, and he says straight up uh, the success of passion and warfare, the label wanted something similar. And he's like, I wanted to do something completely different. And he, he kind of alludes to his love of Pantera and you should go watch this video people but it's basically the story um, and, and the idea behind the series is to dig up old albums, maybe one off albums or bands that are kind of forgotten and go like, hey, check out the story of this band who made this kick ass album and then disappeared into obscurity. Yeah. Um, and so that's kind of what the what what this one is. It's about the sex and religion. But even though it's technically a vice solo project, he put a band together and he says as much in in the in the interviews around it. Like I wanted to create a monster band with like all these great players. But the thing that I thought was the most interesting about it is he gave Devin Townsend of strapping young lad, his first gig. Yeah. And there's all this crazy stories about, cause Devin Townsend was like a 19, 20 year old kid. And he's like shitting in Steve Vai's guitar case. And like, <laughs> uh, there's a clip of him on headbangers ball where it, Steve, Steve is kind of like, it's this great exchange where he's like, yeah, like I had all these, this garbage bag full of demo tapes and they were all these pretty boy rockers who looked great and played perfect. And he's like, but that's not what I wanted. Yeah. And Devin's like, yeah. He's like, thanks. You know, you feel like you care about my, thanks for caring about my feelings, you know? And so the whole pro, the whole thing is Steve is kind of like, no, Devin looks good, but he just doesn't when he tries, but he doesn't care kind of. Yeah. I'm like, I can relate to that. But then, you know, later in the episode to fuck with him, Devin comes out and he's got like, he looks like Nosferatu. He's got his glasses upside down, his, nice. uh, his shirt pulled up, his underwear. And it's, it's you know, but it's a good story. And at the end, yeah. you know, it, all, it all ends well. But you should go watch it because we're going to start doing this hopefully recurring segment. And if you have suggestions for bands we should cover, you know, add those to the mix too. But yeah, I've got about three more in queue right now. Nice. So we're going to see how it goes. So far, it's gotten positive response. Someone already commented, hey, th this is great. The guy was like, it's actually, the band is actually Vi. I'm like, I know, I know. Uh, I, went, yeah, yeah. I went back and changed it. But he he, he actually said this was great. Thanks. So, yeah. So yeah, he, he atoned for his sin. <laughs> well, I wanted to go over, I mean, uh, there was a couple of things. Or the last thing I wanted to go over anyway was it's coming. I mean, I know it's only middle of February, but we're coming up on some pretty badass tours uh, that are coming out. And I just wanted to go over those, some of those with people. Um, just, just some of the smaller ones, plus some of the bigger ones and just kind of give everybody a little bit of pump up for what's coming. And uh, uh, cradle of filth going out on tour with devil driver. And um See, we got uh, another one, uh, exciting one for me. That's a, it's a small tour, but um, I'm pl I'm gonna try to go see it. Is Power Wolf's coming? Um, they're gonna be coming to the United States, and they're a killer, you know, symphonic metal band. That's gonna be great. Queens Rikes out on tour are gonna be out on tour. Um, another favorite one of mine that I'm really excited for is Ministry. Ministry is gonna be out on tour. Uh, I saw that. Who are they touring with? Isn't it? It's like another pretty good band. I thought. Yeah. Well, it's a uh, 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 Gary. Is it Gary Newman from uh, the oh, guy that did Cars? Yeah, okay. Yeah. yeah he's a solo artist. Yeah. And then, uh, of course, we just talked about Steel Panther. They're going to be on tour. Avatar. Avatar is going to be on tour. Um, and then we've got some of the bigger shows coming up this summer. We've got. The Mega Monsters with Gojira and Mastodon and uh, Foreigner, the historic farewell tour. Yo, did you see that Tesla might be touring or touring? Yeah, Tesla is touring and they're doing a little mini residency in Vegas too. 
Oh, nice. Yeah. And then we got the uh, Ghost. Ghost is torn with the Monomarth this summer. Disturb. Take back your life tour with Breaking Benjamin and Ginger. Um, and then for all you fans out there, we got the Nickelback Get Rolling tour. And Nickelback uh, gets Nickelback gets uh gets a lot of crap. They're yeah, they're they, cool guys. They, they seem are. like good dudes. Yeah, and they then make course, some. They have some good songs. Like let's yeah, they do. Though. They do. Um, and then of course there's the Pantera with Lamb of God tour. Oh, that's gonna be great. Yeah, so those are, just but the, not in Germany. No, no. So those are just a few of the tours uh-huh, that coming through. So, <laughs> so I mean, let's not. We don't have to cut it out yet. There's a couple other things to talk about. So one of the things um, on the Dave Mustaine note, uh, I saw there's a couple reunions in talks. I saw Sam Bora talking about Bon Jovi reunion, yeah, yeah, potential, and then um, uh, they. I, I read that Friedman's actually going to play with Megadeth on some dates. Oh, is he? Yeah, Marty Friedman. So Marty Friedman's actually going to be on tour with Queensryche when Queensryche's out on tour. Is he playing? He's playing leads for them. No, he's playing his solo. He's he's opening. He's doing his solo thing. Yeah, and okay. them, him and uh, Trauma, the um, the Bay Area Thrashers. Trauma. Okay. Yeah. That's so, awesome. Yeah. Yeah, I, th- there's. It's it's really great that um, I feel like everyone was like boxed up for so long that there's like so many bands are just like oh I gotta get out of the road ASAP like <laughs> exactly there's I mean it's just like everybody's got to get out on the road and start making money again and so there's just tour after tour after tour and I mean I forgot to mention um, one of our favorites is Mr Bungle's going to be on tour oh yeah that's i mean it's it's with scotty in and lombardo right yeah dave lombardo yep yeah that's it that's an interesting one because um uh I, like i as much as i love bungle i lo- i what i love is their like really obscure avant-garde stuff and so i'd love to see them play you know some of that stuff like not necessarily i mean i'm sure scott and uh and and um Dave can play all that stuff. Yeah. Dave has been playing with Pat and all tons of stuff, but I would love to see them play, you know, like some of the stuff material from the first two albums from like, yeah. you know, the, the self-titled and the disco Volante record, but they're also playing. So this is interesting. You know, that sick new world um, festival is this week, this summer in Vegas. Yep. It's in May. Right. Yep. Um, and bungles on that as well as incubus. And so I, I was thinking, it's got to be interesting to see what Incubus does. Like, I would love it if Incubus plays their. I mean, in it because of the lineup, the lineup's like a lot of heavier, kind of like new metal, like throwbacks. Yeah. So I'm hoping that Incubus plays stuff from their early catalog too. Some of their more like, you know what I mean, heavier yeah. driven stuff. Because a lot of their newer stuff is a lot more of light. And I I love Incubus. You know, I, I love their stuff regardless. But obviously, have a you know. A, a leaning towards the more faith no more bungle yeah. styled shit yeah, from yeah. their early years. Yeah. Um there's a couple other things we could chat about. One of them being um have you seen the very public beef with um and this isn't necessarily metal but you know I think you can give me a pass because I think this is a band that was definitely influential to a lot yeah. of metal bands Pink okay. Floyd yeah. Have you seen the oh. whole beef with Gilmore and Roger Waters? No, I thought you were going to talk about the uh, the um, the anniversary of Dark Side of the Moon where they changed their logo and pissed Didn't, a bunch of people oh, I off. I saw that. <laughs> oh my god! What like? What did what did they do? Like I didn't. Okay, let's talk about that because I saw the new cover briefly and I was like, well, "That's weird." Yeah. So did they take the rainbow off it or something? Is that no? It's they... still it, they still have it on there. It's just they mixed it up a little bit and it pissed some people off because they, they thought it was referring to a gay thing and it wasn't. And so so they I mean, they got all pissed. Who cares? But like, yeah. people are so people are so touchy. I actually I don't know if you saw the post I shared about Rob Halford the other day, um, but I thought it was so cool about because 
and Dallas was talking. Dallas was, <laughs> and she's obviously like very like very religious, but um, it was interesting because uh, it was just talking about Rob Halford and how everyone kind of knew he was gay, but like there, it was like one of these things where like a reporter finally just asked him, like, "Yeah, what do you have to say about this?" And he's like, "Well, I've been a gay man my, all my life," and he it was just so Rob Halford because it was like. He's like kind of like no one really ever asked him directly, yeah, that, that yeah. question. And when someone did, he was just honest about it. He's just like, yeah, I'm fucking gay. Like, what do you what do you want? Um, and I don't know how I I got on that thing, but back to the Pink Floyd stuff. Uh, what's interesting about this is, <laughs> so Roger Waters just did a speech. It's political, basically. Yeah, Roger Waters did a speech at the UN. Okay. calling for peace in ukraine basically like yeah. he's like yo like we we should we need to like engage in peace talks and I, I love roger waters man like i i respect that guy so much he's first of all he's like in his 70s and he, he's a spry dude he's out there like advocating for human rights and stuff but basically what he said was he's like i love all people the ukrainians the russians the you know the Israelites, the Palestinians, the Israelis, Palestinians, whatever. Yeah. Um, and he's like, and we need to, he's, we're brothers and sisters. We need to like figure this out. And there are people needlessly dying. And like, why are we just shipping money to this war? Why don't we like, let's fix this, you know? And uh, so <laughs> Gilmore, it was actually Gilmore's wife. Gilmore's wife, I guess I, I've never even heard of her, but her name's Polly Sampson. Okay. I don't I don't even know anything about her, so I'm not gonna say anything about her because I don't know. I just saw this this interaction on social media. She tweeted out Roger Semite Roger is an anti-Semite who lip syncs and all this just like really mean shit about Roger Waters. And yeah. David Gilmore like retweeted it and was like, every word this is true. Wow. Wow. And, and, so, so it's funny because all these people were always like, fuck you, David Gilmore. Blah, 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 blah. And vice versa. Like more, I think more people hate Roger Waters because of the propaganda yeah. around yeah. Like, war. And they're like, anyone who criticizes this loves Putin. You know, um, but what I my first thought when I saw this was like, oh man, pussy will make dudes do like just insane things. <laughs> <laughs> True. Just like, like True. Steel Panther said it best. Pussy ain't free. Let me tell you, brother. You pay for that shit one way or another. Nice, so nice. That's that like from the Gospel of Steel Panther. Yes, it is. <laughs> yes, it is. Um, I don't know. Is there anything else we can talk about that's worth that that's worth us like you know, venting our silly opinions about? No, I mean i I think we've covered a lot for this for this episode. You know, we're. I think. I think. I think. I mean, honestly, I think the way you just that last few sentences was the way to end it right there. <laughs> yeah. That was, that was like the finale. Yeah. Right. That was like the finale right there. <laughs> no. And the, and the other thing is too, like, I don't want to be self-important. Like we, we, we're going to do this. We're going to talk about some stuff in metal. I don't know how frequently we'll do it. Like if there's a good response, maybe we'll do it. Yeah. Be in, inspired to do it more often. Yeah. But I think it's, it's something that we've been needing to do for a while. So it's good that yeah. we finally started yeah. doing it. Yeah. So we'd like to encourage everybody to go check out our YouTube channel um, on YouTube, Brutal Planet Magazine. And then Watch you can the Bands check, of Yore. Yeah, Bands of Yore. Check out uh, our site itself, BrutalPlanetMag.com. And then uh, check out our Facebook and Instagram page, too. Yeah, we're on everything. We're on Twitter, and we, I, we haven't tweeted in a while. I should probably uh, get back yeah. on that. But also yeah. TikTok. We have a TikTok account. We just haven't. Yeah, done a lot out of it. There's a few things on there, but you know we're gonna we're gonna be a little bit more engaged. Yeah. I think moving forward. So, so everybody check out all of our uh, social media stuff, and and if you're not liking it, like it because that helps us out. So yeah, the other thing is too, I like I don't want to be one of those 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 people who's like like and subscribe at every yeah. five seconds. You know, I think if we put out good content and we you know we make good stuff, like people are gonna. Yeah, it's, so if you like what you see and like what you hear, then like and subscribe. But don't just like and subscribe for because we told you to. Yeah, and, <laughs> and, and or you pity us, so yeah, just you know, right. just do it because you like it. Don't pity us. We we all we're we're pushing up. We're pushing on four hundred subscribers. So we're yeah, exactly. we're building slow and steady. Exactly, exactly. And we haven't even really scratched the surface. I think. I mean, 
props to Joey for that Max Cavalera interview because yep. that is fantastic content. Yeah. But I think honestly, some of our best content, our most like viewed content is the Randy, um, the story about Randy Bly from the guy, yeah. um, and the Westboro Baptist Church, and then uh, the interview Colin did. Yeah. With uh, the guy from Three Teeth. Yeah. So I mean, you know. We, yeah. we need to get after it. We need to put more content. We do. Out. We do. Anyway, that's enough. I'll shut up. All right. Well, we appreciate everybody listening to this through and through and uh, check us out for our next episode. Thanks, everybody. We love you. Peace out.